Hey DIYers, George here from Alarm Grid. Today I'm going to show you guys how to update the 2GIG Easy Updater tool so that you guys can bring your GC2 or your GC2E up to the latest firmware so that it works with the new Alarm.com LTE communicators. Now typically you're going to be doing this on older 2GIG GC2 systems. So a lot of you guys out there that are transitioning from another company or that have an old 3G, 4G or CDMA cellular communicator are coming to that point now where it's going to stop working pretty soon. So the companies are saying that you need to either get a new panel or you need to find a way to get LTE to the system. This this is where the updates come in handy on the GC2 security system. Now, there's two ways to update the firmware on a GC2 system. You got the updater cable, which is a little difficult. It's We have a video on that and an FAQ that shows you how to do it. Um, or you can use the 2GIG Easy Updater tool, which is this little device right here. You simply buy this online, you plug it into the security system while it's powered down. You power it on, you hit the start button, and then boom, your system will start the firmware update and it should end up on the latest update. Now, if you guys are doing uh, the normal GC2, the latest update for that is 1.19.3.1. And sometimes when you guys buy this tool, it actually comes from the factory with an old firmware update. Um, so there are times, which is what this video is gonna cover, that you may have to even update the updater tool. Yeah, so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to update the updater tool. And there's going to be a second video that will show you how to use the updater tool to update your GC2 or your GC2E system. So before I actually plug this in to update, um, this one is I've actually verified and I'll show you guys later on in the video that it is on an old firmware. And again, this happens once in a blue moon, but if it does happen to you, this is where this video will come in handy. And a couple of tips. Uh, one, if you guys are gonna update the tool, you do need a Windows computer. Uh, the, the software to update this needs to be run from Windows. So if you guys have a Mac, you are going to need some kind of virtual desktop or remote desktop to uh, access a Windows PC so that you can run this on the Windows computer. Today, I'm actually gonna be running it on a Mac using a, um, a remote desktop. So I'll be showing you guys from a Mac, but from a Windows, how to update the tool. And let's go ahead and get over to the computer now. All right, DIYers. So now that I'm at the computer, I'm gonna have my updater tool here. As you see, there's no power to it. If you look at the little side port here, there is gonna be a little USB port that you're gonna be able to connect to it. These are the cables that typically come with Android phones or tablets. Um, you need the ones that you can connect your phone uh, from the computer or yes, yeah, so you need the cable that you can run from your computer to your Android phone or tablet that not only does power, but that also transmits data. So if you guys have a USB slash USB FTDI compatible cable, you're going to want to use one of those cables. If you guys only have the ones that are used for power, the update will not work. So you need to make sure you guys have one of these cables here. You're gonna plug one end into here eventually, not right now. And what you can go ahead and start doing now is if you do have one of these, plug it into the back of your computer. So I have that end plugged into the back of my computer for right now. I'm not doing anything with it at the moment. I'm just gonna leave it here. And I'm gonna show you guys now the on-screen instructions on how to get this updater tool updated. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do just so that it's easier for you guys to follow along is to go ahead and open up the uh, FAQ that's linked in the description. It'll say, how do I successfully update the two gig easy updater tool? The reason I'm doing this is not only is it just gonna be easy for you to follow along in the video, but there's gonna be a separate link you will have to find uh, to get the actual update file for the updater tool. So uh, open up the link the FAQ in the description so that that way all you have to do is click the hypertext link and it'll open up the page that will allow you to download the update. So once you're here, basically the FAQ is just going over unpacking the device. Make sure you don't lose this four pin cable adapter right here. This will be what's needed to update any TS1 touchscreen keypads you may have that work with your GC2 system. If you guys lose that piece and do the update on your GC2, your TS1 keypads may stop working. They also need the firmware update. 
All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and skip past the unpacking. Here is where you're going to click the second link, the download the new firmware. So if I download the new firmware, it's, there's a little hypertext link here that will open up a new tab. And this is where I'm gonna download my new uh, GC2 firmware. Now on this page, you are going to see two download firmware buttons. Uh, the one that we wanna download is the one for the updater tool. So that'll be this one, this one right here. Download current firmware update, updater tool. When I click on this, it should now forward me over to a Dropbox link. Once the page fully loads up, again, you wanna make sure you're doing this on a Windows computer, all right? If you're doing this on a Mac, you will need to do a remote desktop or some sort of virtual uh, desktop so that you guys can run this through a Mac, or I'm sorry, through a Windows platform, all right? All of these files end in .exe, so that is only run through Windows. It cannot be run on Mac. So once you have the, the Dropbox page fully loaded up, you're gonna see this little download button right up here in the top right. You're gonna hit download. You're gonna hit direct download. And at the bottom, of that, it's asking us what we wanna do with the file that we're downloading it. I'm just gonna save it. All right, after it's done downloading from Dropbox and you've, it's saved into your folders, um, what I'm gonna do, since it's actually a zip file, right there it says .zip, we're going to need to extract or unzip it. Uh, so we're gonna hit open folder. This will take me to my downloads. And as you see here, we have, if you guys just wanna check, the file we downloaded is this UPDV underscore tool firmware, that whole, that whole name right there, that whole file name. You'll find it right here, right? We just downloaded it today, 625, uh, 2021 at 3.37 p.m. So from here, it has a little zip icon, so we need to extract or unzip it. So we're going to right click, extract all, it's gonna ask, you know, select the destination. Normally it just puts it in the same downloads folder and it creates a new one, but just an unzipped folder um, in the downloads. So I'm just gonna leave it there just so it's easier to see. I'm gonna hit extract, almost completed. All right, so it actually opened it up for me right away. I'm just gonna click out of this so you guys can see. So I have the zipped one right here and then I have the unzipped one right here. See how it doesn't have that little zip icon? So, now that we have this, I'm just gonna click on it to open it up. Now there's a couple of things. When you guys go to plug this in, um, really quickly I wanna show you. If you guys don't have the drivers on your computer, I actually downloaded the drivers beforehand so you're not gonna see the error on mine, but if you guys get this error, if you scroll down here, this is just showing you all the steps that we did, which all we did was download, put it into our downloads folder, we extracted it. But now, here's where the interesting part is gonna come into play. Now, let's say you guys do have your USB cable and you know for sure this is the one that you use for your smartphones and tablets um, and it not only transmits power but it transmits data as well. You know for sure that that's, this is the cable. When you guys plug it in, and if you guys get this issue right here, no COM ports found with the FTDI support, it could be that you guys don't have the correct drivers downloaded. So what I recommend you guys do, if this is the first time you guys are doing this, and you guys haven't done these steps before, run this little file right here. CDM 2128setup.exe. I'm just gonna right click on it, I'm gonna run as administrator. This will get me the drivers that I need so that this cable right here can actually communicate to this device, to the two, to, to the two gig easy updater tool. So if you guys are following along, just run that as an administrator. It'll pull up this little wizard right here. I'm just gonna hit extract. 
It's gonna start extracting them. Like I said, I ran these before the video because I was doing it as well to make sure everything functioned correctly. It's gonna take me to this wizard here, the device driver installation wizard. I'm just gonna hit next. If you wanna scroll through the license agreement, you're more than welcome to do that. I'm gonna hit accept the agreement and just gonna move on to the next. So now my driver package my driver packages are ready to use, ready to use, ready to use. I'm just gonna hit finish. So now I shouldn't have any issues with my updater tool and the device finding it. So what I'm gonna do, as soon as I plug this in, it will give power. Remember, this cable gives power and transmits data. So this will give power to the updater tool and the updater tool will start showing me sequence of numbers. Those are the firmware updates that this one has. And you will see, like I told you earlier in the video, this one has an old firmware update on it. So let's go ahead and plug it in for right now. So this one, you will see here, it says 1.18, but the, the, the first one, so it's gonna scroll, that's the GC2E. This is the 1.13, that's gonna be the GC2, and then that's 1.18, the second firmware update you see after the EN underscore US, that's for the two gig uh, GC2E, right? So you have the GC2 firmware, and then the GC2E. So as you see, like I told you guys earlier, it's 1.19.3.1 is the latest update. This one is on 1.13. So we definitely need to do a firmware update on this. Um, I'm just gonna unplug it real fast because I, since I'm doing this on a Mac, when I plugged it in, I got a pop-up if I wanna connect this to my Mac or Windows and that pop-up disappeared. So I'm gonna plug it in one more time and you guys need to make sure that when you plug it in, if you're doing this on a Mac with a remote desktop, that you allow the device to connect to your Windows. Plugged it in. I'm gonna go over to my computer here. It's gonna say, choose where you would like to connect future devices. I'm just gonna connect it to the Windows because that's what I need. Now that it's connected to my Windows and I've installed my drivers, I can now do this update, the UPDV tool firmware version 1.22. And if you see here in the description when I hover over it, it'll say 1.22 is the version for the GC2E. And then 1.19.3.1 is the version for the normal GC2. I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna run as administrator. And then hopefully, since I have the drivers installed, you should get this pop-up. It'll say two gig technologies, firmware update is needed. And it'll start doing the firmware update on the tool. And you just need to wait a couple of minutes, let it, let it do its magic. And when it's done, it'll say, it should say completed, um, and the tool will show you done as well. So like I said, it'll take a couple of minutes, so let it go ahead and do its, uh, its update. All right, as you see here, the updater tool now is saying done. All right, so now that that's done, if you go to your computer and look at the screen, it should also say update successful. You can now go ahead and hit quit. You can exit out of everything if you like, and you can go ahead and grab your tool, grab the USB cable, unplug it, it will power down. This device is now on firmware version 1.19.3.1, and you can use it to update your GC2, your GC2E, and all of your TS1 touchscreen keypads. Let's go ahead and get back over to the video room. All right, guys, now that we're done at the computer doing the update on the 2 gig easy updater tool, now all we gotta do is use this to update our GC2, our GC2E, or the TS1 keypads, which we will have a video for that as well. So make sure you guys keep your eyes out for that. If you guys have any questions about updating the tool, if you guys weren't able to get the files, anything whatsoever, please send us an email to support at alarmgrid.com. If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and hit the little bell icon so whenever we upload new content, you guys get notified. I'm George, and I'll see you guys next time.